on an unremarkable street in an unremarkable corner of an unremarkable town, a dark green leaf floated harmlessly along the tarmac, drifting through the mild spring breeze. However, halfway through its journey to cross the street, it was rudely interrupted by a shoe, not just any shoe, a thick black boot crushing the leaf and pinning it against the ground. As it turned out, this boot belonged to Julian Samson, private first class of the unit ground division. Samson looked down at the leaf pinned underneath his foot, a disappointed look across his young, freckled face. They never crunch when I step on them, he thought to himself, stepping off the leaf to continue his lonely walk along the deserted street. As he passed the old corner shop, now empty and lifeless, he thought back to his days growing up here, sneaking into that shop and stealing sweets by stuffing them under his school jumper. Simpler times, he smiled to himself. Of course, everything was different now. Where kids used to congregate on the corner near the bus stop lay scattered newspapers and long forgotten crisp packets. The wind picked up slightly, pushing one of the papers into his path, its front page urging people to stay inside in their homes. Julian paused and surveyed the streets around him, only the birds in the overcast sky proving that time itself hadn't frozen. It may have looked it, but the world wasn't over. Yet, Samson shuddered slightly and trudged on. Whether it was the sudden wind or the knowledge of his mission, he couldn't tell. He knew that all across the country there were people just like him, patrolling, standing vigil, no, searching. They were all searching for it. He didn't know what it was called. None of them did. At the start of the year, it had breached containment somehow, escaping into the late winter nights. Despite Unit's best efforts, they couldn't find it. It had disappeared like Vashta Narada blending into the shadows of night. For weeks, they had tried to track it down and recapture it, but it knew how to hide. It was smarter than them. From what Samson had heard, they'd been lucky to capture it in the first place. It had practically appeared on Unit's doorstep, but it was tiny back then, or so the rumours claimed. So tiny, yet so hungry, its endless and furious appetite fueling its rapid and uncontrollable growth, it seemed to have been learning more about them than they were learning about it. That's probably how it got out. With few options remaining, the decision was made to put the country on complete lockdown, forcing everyone to stay indoors, spreading an elaborate cover story to scare them into obeying. It was for the best that they didn't know the truth. Then the mobilisation began. Thousands of soldiers sent out all across the nation to patrol these empty, dead streets in the vain hope of finding it. Of course, it was mainly the grunts, the low-level recruits, the disposables. Samson wasn't surprised. It made sense. He'd signed up to be on the front lines, but knowing what he was up against, he wished he'd joined early enough to sit this one out. Suddenly, a metal rattle came from a nearby alleyway. Snapping out of his thoughts, Samson whipped his head towards the sound, a small tin can rolling out from around the corner at the end of an alley. Probably just a cat, he thought, or a fox, or the little colour on his face drained. It. With a slight lump in his throat, the young, inexperienced recruit began cautiously and quietly inching towards the opening to the alleyway, his hand resting on his standard issue handgun, holstered on his waist. Time seemed to slow as he moved through the claustrophobic opening. His heart began to pound faster as he edged closer to the turning that would reveal the source of the noise. He came to a halt at this turning, his shallow breaths and pounding hearts making him feel slightly dizzy. But the adrenaline pumping through his system kept him ready and alert. Please be a cat, he prayed silently, before finally rounding the corner, gun drawn and primed, just like he had practiced over and over again in basic training. What Sam Thompson saw shook him to the core. There was indeed a cat, or what was left of one. It was strewn across the ground in furry chunks, and Samson's blood ran cold, ice cold, as he saw the unholy creation lurking over it. Out of everyone, everywhere, why did it have to be him in this unremarkable corner of the country? The lump in the young man's throat was now constricting, making it harder to breathe, or maybe it was the fear. Luckily, the ungodly creature had its back to him, if it even had a back. Maybe I could catch it by surprise, shoot it down before it even knows I'm here, he thought, 
Foolish, of course, and a little bit delusional, but he had to do something. He tapped the underside of his wrist twice, activating his unit tracking beacon, so at least headquarters knew he was here, that it was here. Samson had signed up to save the world. Maybe this was finally his chance. With a deep breath and a thousand desperate prayers, he stepped forward ever so slightly to steady himself. Crunch. Samson's heart sank, plummeting as he heard the loud crunch beneath him. He looked down at the ground, and sure enough, a little green leaf lay nestled underneath his boot. For once in his life, it had crunched. Under most other circumstances, he may have even enjoyed the bitter, dark comedy of it, but poor, pale young Julian Sampson wouldn't have another chance to think coherent thoughts. Looking up, the creature was on him in an instant, its ravenous appetite demanding more than just an alley cat, demanding him. It towered over him, swirling around him, reaching deep within him. Samson was too frozen in fear to struggle or fight back. He had seen its face, its horrific, indescribable face that would paralyse even a battle-hardened Dalek fresh from the volcanic pits of the Helshan Deliverance. His gun fell harmlessly to the ground with a clanging thud. It wouldn't have worked anyway. As the creature's formless tendrils swarmed his face and body, consuming his very mind and soul, Samson was able to think one last thankful thought before the darkness. At least it got me early.